Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Shi Chao Wang, and uh, this this work was done when I interned at Photo Labs last summer, and jointly with Sarah and Marco. Okay, so let's get started. So Filecoin uh, currently is the largest storage-based uh, blockchain in terms of both storage capacity and market cap. And in Filecoin, the the storage miner gains the uh, the right to participate in a consensus protocol and to create blocks by pledging storage capacity to the blockchain. And whenever their blocks are included on chain, miners are in return compensated with the underlying cryptocurrency file. So the Filecoins uses the, the so-called storage power consensus, which mainly consists of, of two components. The first one is a, a stable resistance mechanism called proof of storage that keeps a, a accurate table of the storage pledged by, by each storage miner. And the second one is a consensus protocol called expected consensus that can run by any set of weighted participants uh, maintained maybe in a storage table. So just like a proof of stake blockchain uh, consensus protocol and the consensus protocol will output uh, an ordered list of transactions. So the focus of this work and this talk will be uh, attacking and analyzing the expected consensus in Filecoin. So as I said, that EC is run by a list of participants weighted by their storage power. So we call them storage miners in Filecoin. So uh, we know that every consensus protocol needs a, a leader election mechanism. So Filecoin uses, uh, also has one, and Filecoin uses the DRAND uh, decentralized random uh, random beacon, uh, which is a, a public random beacon, and it generates a random number every thirty seconds. And we also make use of uh, like the verifiable random function or VRF. So in each epoch, which is like thirty seconds, uh, every storage miner will compute a VRF value. And once, as long as this VRF value is less than a, a certain threshold or certain target, so the miner will be elected as a leader in that epoch. And on expectation, currently in Filecoin, we have five leaders per, per epoch. And I think that's why like, this protocol is called expected consensus. So now we, we see that we have multiple blocks in each epoch or, like, or in each height of this blockchain. So actually this is a DAG uh, directed a, a cyclic graph instead of a, a, single, a single chain. So now we, uh, Firecore introduces the expected consensus introduces the, the concept of tip sets, which, are, is, uh, which is a set of blocks so we call a set of block a tip set if first if they share the same height or they are produced in the same epoch and uh, at the same time if they have the same parent tip set so i will give you some example here like uh, on uh, for the deck on the on this slide we have three uh, tip sets the first one is the tip set abc because all these three blocks have the same parent block that is the genesis block. And then the second tip set is block D and the forms of block D and block E because they have the same set of parent blocks that is the tip set ABC. And for the same reason, the block F, block G and the block H also form a tip set. So, and we can also see that actually a subset of a tip set is also, uh, we can also call it a tip set. Like, uh, like the block F and the block G, they can also form a tip set. So the blockchain in, in expected consensus is actually a, a chain of tip sets instead of a, a chain of blocks. So for the fork, cho for the fork, fork choice rule, the uh, EC adopts the, the halfest chain uh, instead of the longest chain by, by counting the total number of blocks in the block deck. And uh, here we have a, a, a more nuanced example here, a, a more nuanced deck here. So we can see that in this example, the block A, B, C and its subsets are, are tip sets. And also at the same time, because block D and the block E, uh, both of these block, these two blocks have the same parent block, parent block set, parent tip set, uh, block A and block B. So block D and E and also its subsets are also tip sets. And also block F itself is also a tip set. So we can find 
uh, we can find uh, like two chains of chip sets here in this deck. The first one consists of the genesis block, block A and block B, and then on the second in the second epoch is block D and block E. And the second chain of chain of chip set in this example is uh, is the genesis block and the block A B C and then block F. So we can see that both chains have like have equal weight that is five they have five blocks in the in the blockchain so they actually have equal weight so we we need uh, the tie breaking rule so in this paper in this work we assume uh, we assume that the tie breaking is, fav is in favor of the Edward three so this is actually a quite standard assumption in like in the longest chain security analysis this only makes the Edward three stronger. And in practice, we can implement like some deterministic tie-breaking rule. Okay, before going to the detail of the analysis, so let's understand like what is logic behind the design of tip sets. That's why we want like multiple blocks in each epoch or, or in each on each height of the blockchain. So maybe the first advantage is that with the notion of tip sets, we have multiple blocks in one epoch. So we have many concurrent minings. So the miners are elected more often than like the in a commodal consensus. This means that there's less variance in mining. So recall that in Bitcoin, like the Bitcoin miners will just join like the mining pools to fight with the mining variance. But in five coins, in every 30 seconds, we have five leaders elected. So that is that is much more frequent than in in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, and maybe the the second intu intuition is that the private attacker uh, attack could be harder on on EC. Basically, this is the same intuition as in Ghost, the greatly heaviest observable subtree. So Ghost is known to be secure against the the private attack on the honest majority assumption. Uh, no matter how large is the block, how large the block mining rate is, so we can expect the same result for EC. And uh, however, we also know that, uh, uh, having like the the design of tipset also enables a, a a larger attack space. So just recall that, uh, in in Ghost, we also have the balance attack uh, instead of the private attack. So we may have to worry about the same problem on EC as well. So to see the, the attack space on EC, I will show you a, a couple of examples. The first though, the first one is called the, the private attack with a head start. So here in this example, in this figure, uh, we use red blocks for the adversarial blocks. So they are mined by the Edward three and the green blocks are mined by the honest nodes. So here we have two chains of tip, tip set. The first one ends at block H. So it consists of block A, B, C, D, and then block E, and then block H. And the second chain, chain of tip set and at, at block I. So it consists of like purely by, purely uh, of honest blocks. So we can see that here in this, uh, the block C, block C and block D are shared by both chains, although they are mined by the honest nodes. So this attack can succeed even if the adversary mines fewer blocks than the uh, than the honest node. So this is because the adversary can leverage some honest blocks like the block C and the block D here as a head start. So allowing them, allowing the adversary to gain an unfair uh, advantage. So another example is the balance attack. So essentially EC is a proof of stake protocol, assuming we have a power table for all the storage miners. So here, just like many other proof of stake protocol, the adversary can equivocate by creating like many different blocks with the same block header. So this enables the, the following balance attack. So the, ad, the adversary splits the only power by sending many equivocating blocks. So basically here, the block B1, B2, and B3, they all have the same block header, but may differ in block content or payload. So on this node, we'll work on different tip sets. So assuming that the tie breaking is in favor of the adversary, so there are many like chains of equal ways, and perhaps none of these chains will be stabilized. So uh, after seeing this like these attacks, we found that the 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 security analysis of VC seems challenging. 
So indeed, despite EC having been proposed years ago, like no formal analysis was conducted before I, I joined the protocol labs. So in this work, uh, we proved the security uh, of EC by extending the proof technique developed in one of my previous papers uh, titled with everything is a race and an accumulator always spins. So this proof of technique reduces all possible attacks to races between the adversary and the honest nodes. So with using this technique, we prove that EC is secure if one minus uh, E to the power of one minus beta M is larger than beta M. So here, uh, the notations are like beta is the adversarial storage fraction and uh, M is the expected number of blocks in each epoch. And currently M is set to be five in the, in the file coin implementation. So here, let's understand this inequality. So here, the left-hand side is the actually the minimum chain growth per epoch, so which equals to the probability of having at least one of these blocks in, in one epoch. And the right-hand side is the expected uh, adversarial blocks per epoch. So uh, this is the main result, like the main posit positive result proved in this paper. And actually, we also found that this security threshold is also tight. It's also tight. So uh, let's look at the, the uh, uh, attack called the unsplit attack, so which is an extension of the balance attack. So in this attack, the adversary tries to split the honest participants as much as possible among n chains. So here n can be as large as the, the number of honest nodes. So this means that every honest miner will receive a different copy of the equivocating blocks. So in this way, like in each epoch, at most one honest block is added to, to the blockchain. So here we can see, see that indeed the, the chain growth of this public chain is, is like, it's like the minimal chain growth. And we only have one blocks in an epoch. And, and simultaneously, the adversary can create a separate and a private chain utilizing all its, uh, all its blocks again by, equ by equivocating with these blocks. So the chain growth of this private chain will be, like, be, will be equal to beta M. So we can see that if the chain, if the, the, like, the public chain or the honest chain grows slower than the private chain, so then the attack will succeed and the, the EC is not secure. So this will give the same condition as what we proved previously. So combining these two results, we have found that the necessary and the sufficient, sufficient condition for EC security, uh, which is shown here, and currently with the parameter M equal to five, so the security threshold or the fault tolerance is about 0.196. And if we set M equal to one, then the EC is close to the longest chain protocol and the beta can be as large as like uh, 0.433. And approximately beta is about one by M when M is large. And in this work, we also proposed a, a couple of mitigations to the N split attack. The first one is simply replaced by EC by LC and also maybe perhaps remove the, the notion of tip set. So this will give us a provable security uh, protocol with like higher security threshold, but the, like the, uh, it requires uh, quite a bit uh, changes in the implementation. Another more lightweight uh, like mitigation is to add a consistent or reliable broadcast primitive to prevent equivocation. So uh, here the unsplit attack will not be possible if we will pre prevent the adversary from equivocating. So I, I guess I will have to skip the, the details of this improve, improvement proposal, but this has been like made into a, a file core improvement, improvement proposal, uh, 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 like co called FIP0051. And currently this has been merged into the Lotus Filecoin client, which is the most popular uh, software, software client of Filecoin. So, However, so far we don't have a formal security analysis for, for this new protocol, the EC with consistent broadcast. So this is still an open question. Uh, so, okay, uh, as a conclusion, so in this work, we prove 
like the EC is secure if and only if under this condition. And currently with the parameter of M equal to five, EC has a approximately like 20% security. It's not very ideal, but it's better than nothing. And we had like, uh, we had some like practical like improvement proposals. And there are uh, uh, quite a, a lot of like, future work that we can work on. The first one is the security analysis of EC with a consistent broadcast. And uh, the second one is that this work consider, considers only like the classic model of honest versus the malicious participants and it does not address the, like, the rationality of the pa participants. So a formal study of the incentive uh, compatib compatibility is also an important topic for understanding the, the security of EC. And another possible uh, like work is to remove some of the relaxing, like simplifying assumptions, like a synchronous uh, log step synchronous model, and also like the simple tie breaking rule, and maybe consider an adaptive uh, adversary. So I, I guess that's all I want to cover today. And uh, thank you for, uh, for your attention.